Hey everybody, how's it going? I am your host Adrian coming to you almost live from lovely Petaluma, California here in Studio MC2 at Quicksurf Internet Studios. The Geekinator is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. Do feel free to head on over to techpodcast.com and check out all the other technology-related shows over there as well. I'd like to encourage everybody to subscribe to the show if they have not already done so. For those of you who have subscribed, thank you for supporting the show. Uh, you can subscribe via a variety of ways online. If you visit us online over at quicksurf.com, I have uh, under a subscribe heading in the show notes for each and every episode uh, an Og Vorbis feed, an MP3 feed, and a video feed that's compatible with a wide range of devices. You can subscribe to those using your podcatcher of choice or uh, any device that supports a podcast type stream. Also, uh, you can uh, find us online at YouTube. Uh, blip.tv daily motion and uh, stitcher radio and uh, tunein.com so nice uh, selection of places online that you can also subscribe and listen that way let's go ahead and get into the uh, stuff that i've got for this episode kind of the heading the head story if you will uh, over at pc world there's a report uh, the NSA has been apparently running a program called PRISM, P-R-I-S-M. Um, it spies on Americans' emails, searches, etc. For the last several years, the National Security Agency has been reportedly spying on the searches, emails, and file transfers of Americans using a program called PRISM, which tapped directly into the servers used by Apple, Google, Microsoft, and others. The program was revealed Thursday in separate stories from the Washington Post and The Guardian, which earlier revealed that the NSA had worked with Verizon to monitor the metadata of millions of phone calls made by Americans. So uh, this, you know, goes on to to kind of detail what's, you know, what all is, uh, you know, implied here. And, you know, I have to say... Um, if even a small percentage of this is actually true, uh, what a disappointment. Um, just what a disappointment. My tax dollars are paying for that. Can you believe that? That is a huge disappointment. Not only that, it's a massive breach of privacy. Um, I, I'm, I'm really at a loss of... I mean, I'm not surprised. I kind of expected that, but you know, uh, you always hear about, you know, at least if you live here in the U S you always hear about, you know, rumors and conspiracies and all that sort of thing. The government is spying on us and, you know, and it's possible. I mean, there are, there are ways to, to do this. The United States does have, uh, uh, you know, the United States does have the vast majority of the internet infrastructure located here in the continental U S. So there's, you know, it is possible to covertly, uh, without authorization spy on a bunch of traffic because it is a public internet, but, um, you know, just the scope and, and breadth of, of what is entailed here is, you know, I hope none of it's true. I, you know, I really do, but on the other hand, quite frankly, I am not surprised in the least. Um, a little disclosure would have been nice, uh, but, you know, in this day and age, there really is no privacy. I mean, if you're going to broadcast something over the Internet, it is for all intents and purposes. Unless you encrypt your data yourself, it's the same thing as broadcasting something via a loudspeaker out on the street corner somewhere. You know, I mean, there, there really isn't any privacy, any point in between here and there, you know, uh, is essentially a tap point. So interesting read, you know, I, my take on it is I'm, I'm a little, uh, surprised at the sheer level of breadth and scope that, that this is alleging that this prism program prism program uh, over at the nsa has i'm surprised if it's if that really is true i'm surprised it got that big without being discovered earlier um 
but with that being said, I have no doubt that they are doing some type of monitoring and have been for a lot longer than seven years, have been since the internet has been around. Um, just not quite at the scale of scope, you know, that this uh, is is alleging. So, um, you know, like I said, I, I'm kind of at a loss for words on how to even react. But at the same time, I have every right to be upset and get upset and all this other stuff. But at the same time, if I don't have anything to hide, really, does it matter? If I really had something to hide, I'd be encrypting my stuff before it even went on the Internet to begin with, in which case I'd be relatively safe. The fact that I don't have anything to hide, who cares? Um, so what? The government reads my emails. I don't care. They obviously, if they are, they obviously I haven't done anything that would prompt them to show up and, do, and perform any action. So, you know, given that fact, does it really matter? If you're not doing anything wrong, does it really matter if somebody else is looking at your emails? I mean, yeah, it's a breach of privacy, but if nothing comes of it, who cares? I don't know. That's just kind of my position on it. I'm sure, uh, you know, there will be a lot of people that are upset. You can shoot me an email, geekinator at quicksurf.com, if you uh, want to spout off about this. And uh, I'll be more than happy to uh, have some discourse about it. But, you know, until then, you know, as a U.S. citizen living here in the U.S., if, the, if you know, if the U.S. government... Now, if they were to be... Well, here's my position. So, if they were to be reading my emails and actually did something and screwed something up and, you know, made my life miserable, even though I wasn't doing anything wrong, I'd be screaming at the top of my lungs about this. But they've made their system, apparently it's good enough and clandestine enough that if you're not doing anything and do, you would never know. And that's probably why they managed to get is, you know, apparently as far as they have without anybody realizing that this was even happening you know, on a wide scale, uh, simply because, you know, by and large, for the vast majority of people living here in the U.S., it won't make any difference. Anyway, enough said. You know, I, I, like I said, I'm disappointed. I, I'm not really upset because I don't, you know, it, it, it's not going to change anything. But uh, what, yeah, pretty disappointing. From Wired.com, here are the things Apple needs to fix in OS X. That's right. Everyone loves to talk about iOS. It's all we've been hearing about for months. All those rumors about a flat design, some square icons, something beautiful to do with Siri, etc., etc. Um, and then the author of the article here, Rob Roberto Baldwin, says, I don't know about you, but I've grown really frustrated with my iMac, MacBook Air, and my MacBook Pro, these magical computers I use to make movies, write music, edit my 12 megapixel photographs, document every scrap of my life, and create publications that can be read by millions of people. They're not magical enough. I want them to do more. I want them to work better. I want them to not be broken. So he's got a list here of things that need fixing, according to him. Uh, mail. I have to say, I, you know, I'm, mail works pretty good for me, and I'm a Mountain Lion user. He's saying that it's you know been broken since Mountain Lion. Uh, iTunes. Yes, I agree. iPhoto. Absolutely. AirDrop. I don't use. App Uninstaller. Yes. Save As. Oh, my goodness. Please. Uh, contacts, I would love it if they would make it better. Um, spaces, I don't really use spaces. iCloud storage, that would be nice if they made iCloud storage better because right now it's pretty much useless for me. Um, so anyway, that's the list of things that he'd like to have fixed. We'll see if they get fixed here in WWDC. From Hack a Day, embedded solution for uploading webcam pictures to the cloud. What? That's right. We have friends watch the cats when we go out of town, but we always leave a server running with a webcam. It's motion activated using the Linux motion software so that we can check in on them ourselves. But this project may inspire change. It leverages the features of a uh, Carambola 2 to capture images and upload them to Dropbox. That's right. And the picture above the green PCB is a development board for the tiny yellow PCB, which is an actual Carambola 2. Interesting. 
Uh, so anyway, there's a nice little thing that they have that makes us, I wonder if, you know, Raz, you should be able to get this to work with Raspberry Pi. Anyway, uh, definitely check it out. I thought it was interesting and I would share it with all of you. From techcrunch.com, iOS 7, OS 10.9, MacBooks and iRadio, what to expect at WWDC 2013. That's right. Apple is set to deliver its WWDC keynote address on Monday, June 10th, and there are bound to be a lot of new things revealed on that day. The exact details remain shrouded in mystery, but as with every major Apple event, there have been lots of leaks and rumors leading up to this one, so we can at least watch or sketch in broad terms what we're likely to see for the next week. So iRadio, iOS 7, a new version of OS 10, uh, potentially some new hardware, potentially a one more thing. Check out the article if you want the full rundown on what to expect. Uh, let's see here. From Make Magazine, make a solar panel using diodes. That's right. This is a nice little uh, weekend experiment type thing. Uh, a diode made from a semiconductor can generate electricity in the presence of light. Instructables user Nev Dole shows how to generate a modest amount of power by arranging four 1N4148 diodes in parallel. Go ahead and dig out a few diodes from your tackle box, toolbox, B drawer, or whatever you keep all your electronic goodies in and put them in parallel. Connect your voltmeter to either side and take a reading in ambient light. Four to five millivolts, which actually is nothing. <laughs> Now, 45 millivolts isn't bad. Uh, it's definitely not enough to power anything, but still pretty neat. You know, definitely uh, something to, to, to uh, you know, play around with, experiment with, for sure. From Hackaday iOS, keyboard exploit allows a brute force iPad lock screen attack. Now, this is frightening. It's quite common to have a time to lock out after entering several bad passwords. This simple form of security makes automated brute force attacks infeasible by ballooning the time it would take to try every possible permutation. The lock screen on iOS devices like iPad and iPhone have this built in. Enter your code incorrectly several times and the system will make you wait 1, 5, 15, and 60 minutes between entries as you keep inputting the wrong code. But there is an exploit that gets around this. So there's a hardware-based iPad lock screen attack in the image above. Um, this is frightening. Definitely check this out. Um, yikes. As an iPhone user that has a, a, a lock screen, this, yeah, scary. From uh, Yanko Design, I know I don't really link to Yanko Design a whole lot here, but uh, they had a, uh, a post here that I thought was really neat. It's called Table for Two or Six. And basically it's a table that integrates having a desk into it. It's pretty neat. They have a video here that shows it in use. Uh, you can use it as a two-sided desk, so two people facing each other. You basically have a desk. You can have your computer. All your computer stuff is stored underneath the table surface. Um, you can uh, then collapse all that down and hide it out of sight via this clever expanding collapsing mechanism that they have here and use it as a dinner table, which I thought was pretty neat. You can seat up to six people at this dinner table. Uh, the desk aspect of it, like I said, has a built-in drawer uh, to store your stuff. Really neat. Definitely give it a look. I want one. That will do it for this edition of the Geekinator. As always, everything we've talked about is linked up in the show notes, which you can find online over at quicksurf.com. Please do subscribe to the show if you have not already done so. You can shoot me an email, geekinator at quicksurf.com. Uh, email me about Prism and what you think about it, and uh, we can have some discourse if you like. And with that, I will see all of you on the next episode. See you then. Bye.